Hello and welcome. This is day five of Excel World Cup Boot Camp and the last day of text week. This is also going to be a bit of a grab bag day because honestly trying to squeeze all the things that you could say about how to work with text in Excel into five days was a little bit of a challenge. So uh, we're, today we're going to be talking about numbers as text, about emojis, and a couple of text splitting tricks. So let's dive on in. First thing, uh, pretty basic. You may have come across it. Excel distinguishes between numbers stored as text and numbers stored as numbers. Uh, like I said, pretty basic, but it seemed like we wouldn't be doing justice to text week if we didn't mention it. So here, if you just type equals one, and here if you type equals one in quotation marks, which is the way that you normally enter a string, if you don't know, I remember that tripped me up for a while, a thousand years ago. Uh, if you ask, are these two things equal, it will say no. Um, you'll also notice uh, if you, not if you have a formula like this, but if you have a value of text stored as a number, you'll see this little green flag in the corner if you're observant and when you click on it it will say number stored as text do you want to convert to number so that's just a sign to look out for so when you extract numbers from text in particular they will be stored as text so if you take you know the left of one two three abc uh, that is not equal to one two three um, so, you know, all the kind of tricks that we've been showing you about, like if you want to extract a date from a month or various other things like that, if you're getting a number out, it will be a number stored as text. Just be aware of that. So, in many cases, Excel will work out the right way to treat a number from context. Um, so, for example, uh, you say number one plus text one, they'll just say, oh, sure, that's two. This would throw an error in lots of programming languages, including, incidentally, in Power Query. Power Query feels very strongly about types and not mixing types. If you try to add text one to number one, it will say, error, these types don't match. Uh, and likewise here, if you just say text A uh, concatenate with a number one, it's like, sure, no problem, that's A1. Got it. Um, but in other cases, it can cause problems. So, for example, here we're summing uh, this range that has the three different ones in it, but it's only the only one that it's recognizing as a number is this one. So some generally ignores text values and also uh, Boolean values, uh, so trues and falses. Um, <laughs> it's interesting. I, I had to add mostly to this because I tried to make a, a simpler example without referencing another range. I just said sum of one and text one. Uh, but it actually, so I was doing that as an example to show that it would ignore this one. But actually when you put it in that way, it doesn't ignore it. I, that was totally new to me today. So that's kind of weird, but go figure. Um, the other thing is matches and lookups don't match uh, number one to text one. So here we're just saying X match the number one against, uh, not including that range, but here the text one, the false, and the text one. Uh, and that, that says no match. Um, so the last comment on this is just, luckily it's very easy to convert. So here we have uh, text one, two, three. Um, basically what I mentioned above of, you know, if you, if you do something where it looks from the context, like you're trying to treat text as a number, it'll be like, okay, I'll just convert that text to a number. And likewise, if you do something that looks like you're trying to operate on it as text, so like here's a text operation, here's a like a, a number operation. If you use a number operation and it can convert the number to text, it will. And likewise, if you use a text operation and it can convert, it will. So uh, here you can just multiply any number by one or add zero. Uh, and both of those will convert them into text without changing the value. Uh, you can also, to go from number to string, you can just concatenate with an empty string. So just ampersand concatenate and open double quotes, close double quotes, uh, and that'll convert the number to text. Um, so yeah, that's basically it on numbers to text. Like I said, pretty, pretty basic topic, but you do need to know. So emojis. Emojis and other symbols appear in esports cases all the time. So you may remember the bears from Bear Island. Have I mentioned that the cases are free? Go get them while they're free. They're only free for another few weeks. Uh, these were all from one of the Reels games. Card symbols come up lots of the time. Dice come up lots of the time. This was from the Bizarro tug of war thing. Chess pieces. All these things like regularly appear. Key messages, don't be afraid of them. Um, in particular, uh, they, they basically behave like other characters. So you can type them in a cell, you can put them in a formula. So here we're saying, you know, how many koala bears appear in this string? And it's totally fine. It'll count them uh, and give you one. You can put them in lookups and matches. So here you can just like match the, the three dice against the list of dice. and It'll tell you it's three. Um, if you want to enter them in a formula, uh, you might uh, you, you know, you'll find them hard to type. You can press uh, Windows key and, and period or full stop, and it'll bring you up this list of emojis. And then, I don't know, can you? No, I want to type in 
knight as a chess knight that didn't recognize that. So I guess they're not all there. But in any case, what you can do, in any case where you're dealing with uh, with a set of emojis, you will almost certainly have samples of them somewhere. So you can uh, just reference one and then select it and press F9, and that'll convert it into a value. Uh, and then you're all set. Um, and then you can also put them in sheet names and all kinds of other places. So, you know, it's, it's like the trendy uh, tip on LinkedIn at the moment is to emojis and sheet names, whatever, if you're into that. Uh, okay, there are two wobbles to be aware of. So my, my kind of number one advice here is don't be afraid of them. Um, like the, there was a, a trend when they very, very first started using these that like the, the, the hot tip was just find and replace them all, you know, replace this with B1 and this with B2 and this with B3 or this with human and whatever. Uh, you don't have to do that, but two things to be aware of. One is the length. Emojis are a single character, but many of them have a length of two. So this bear, uh, if you take the left of it, left one character, that's it. It is one character. If you take the right of it, it is one character. But if you take the length of it, it's two. Uh, and that can trip up some formulas. So for example, if you have this string of three bears together, if you use mid two one to extract the second character, the second bear from it, that doesn't work. What that's actually giving you is mid will sort of split a length two emoji into two and give you this thing that doesn't render. Um, but I, I guess just to show you, so if I say mid this uh, sequence two, one, to extract the first two characters from that, if I can cat them back together, whoops, I think it's going to give me back the bear. Yeah. So in some sense, there are two characters that make up this bear. They can be split and they can be put back together with mid, but that's quite confusing. So if you happen to know that they're all of length two, then you can do this, which is mid three, two. In other words, start from the third character, which is the first half of this bear and take two characters. But if you have a mix of emojis and characters or emojis that are of length two and emojis that are not of length two, because they're not all of length two, uh, then that can trip you up. Um, it also means that in this case, like, you can use left to take the first character or the second character, the first two characters or whatever. But what it means is that when you take the left two characters of a string, what you get might not have length two. So that's just one thing to be careful of. Um, in most cases, there's only one emoji per cell, so you don't really need to worry about it. But just something to be aware of. Uh, this is also, uh, the other day I mentioned a kind of text reversal example, and I did one with emojis in it. Um, that is, uh, this is why that does not behave normally uh, with the with the normal kind of text reversal. Uh, but incidentally, I realized partway through the week that the, the workbook that I was sharing that I thought people would just kind of download, uh, I realized that I've actually shared it in such a way that everybody has live access to it. So there's a bunch of people's workings in the workbook now, um, which is kind of fun. It's interesting. You can see other people's things. Someone uh, did exactly the kind of uh, approach I was thinking of for that, which is used a reduce um, to to kind of flip it around one character at a time. It's slightly advanced stuff, so I'm not going to touch on that in uh, in the warm-up bootcamp, but go take a look at that if you want. Second thing is rendering issues. Sometimes your emojis look like this. This is the same set of emojis as up here, but now they all look terrible. Um, and this seems to be related to the length issue, so the conditional formatting here is making them blue if it's an emoji of length 2. So you can see all the ones that are of length 1 are rendering just fine. Uh, but all the ones that are of length two are a hot mess. Um, and you can fix this by, this seems to be related to uh, text wrapping. So you can fix this by turning off text wrapping, uh, either by pressing Alt HW, and you see, poof, they're all back, or uh, you go to home and text wrap off. So if you ever see this kind of thing, uh, I don't know, some, I only found out this trick relatively recently. Someone told me about it, uh, but Ever since then, any time I've seen one like this and turned off text wrapping, it has magically reappeared. So that is that is the fix as far as I know. So last thing, a couple of text splitting tricks. Um, so Giles in his video talked about using uh, text before, text after, text split. Uh, sorry, not text split, text before and text after. You can uh, tell it which uh, delimiter you want to take after. You can also use negative indexes for that. So if you want to extract the last word, you can say text after this by space and I want it after the last delimiter. That'll give you the last word. Slightly different thing if you want to uh, if you want to take the third last word or some other kind of index from the end, but you can still do it. You say text split, 
uh, split that into an array, and then you use choose calls, which can also take negative index of indices uh, to say I want the third last one of those. Uh, and that'll, that'll give you that. And the very, very last trick is splitting by everything else, is what I call it. So sometimes you want just the letters or just the numbers or just something from a string. So in theory, you could split on all the other characters and recombine if you want to, but that requires a list of all the other characters. So here, for example, strip all the punctuation marks from this string. And, you know, maybe you have a bunch of strings and maybe you don't know the complete set of punctuation marks that might appear. So how do you do it? Well, here's an option. If you have a list of the characters that are allowed, you can use that to generate a list of the characters to exclude by splitting on all the valid characters. So in other words, you split this on letters and this is what you get. So we talked before about how uh, you can use car sequence 26 code A. This will generate a list of all the letters. Giles talked before about how you can use text split with multiple delimiters. So we're just putting those together. You split this on all the letters, ignore blanks. And this tells you, okay, so the first kind of non-letter block is percent dollar hash. Then this, 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 this. These are all the things. Then you can split the original string on that list and put it back together. So you can say text split this string on this list of delimiters and put it back together. And you might worry, I did the first time I saw it, uh, I think it was Rick Rothstein who, uh, who showed me this trick on, on LinkedIn post a while back. You might worry that, you know, you'd have issues with, you know, if one of these is a prefix of the other, will it break or something? Uh, the short answer is, I've looked into it, he also looked into it, and it doesn't break. So it's just, uh, just a little piece of magic there. Um, an example quickly of a case where you might not want to uh, to concat them back together if you have a, something like this. Uh, and this is a, a fairly common sort of esports input where you have you know a bunch of numbers and a bunch of text around them. Uh, you want to extract just the numbers. You can say split the original thing on uh, all numbers, ignoring empties. And that'll give you all the, the text strips in between. And then split it on that list of things ignoring empties, and that gives you the numbers. And incidentally, I'm just noticing here that I've extracted these as text, but keeping in mind my reminder above, I should multiply them by one to uh, to have them as numbers. So that's it. That's the end of uh, text week. So next week, we're going to talk about lookups. And the nice thing is that once you have text and lookups in your tool belt, so to speak, we're going to be able to look at a lot more actual problems. Um, so we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time at I'm thinking the first thing I'm going to do is just spend a little bit of time on Bear Island, uh, Harry Sider's case. So if you want to take a look at that before we uh, before we dive into it next week, then have a look. Uh, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.